Okay, we are we are looking at um, the COVID timeline. But before we start, I will show you a very heartwarming story. Okay, so there is a story about a young young boy, uh, 12 years old, uh, in, a, in Xinjiang. Uh, he lives in Hortin, uh, which is a county. And he cut off her, his right arm about here and that happened at the evening so of course the parent rushed him to the hospital in Hortin he don't have the facility to connect them back so he had to be sent to Uramuji Yomuji okay. and then the last flight from Hortin to Rumuji is already taxiing on the runway. So they call the airport, asked the airplane to turn back. <laughs> Send him to uh, Ruomuchi for, mm. yeah, for reconnecting. And, and of course, at the same time, connect, uh, tell the daughter over there to get prepared. So mm. the boy arrived in Ruomuchi at around quarter to 12 midnight and then it took them three and a half hours to do the reconnection because uh, if the arm is not reconnected with the body within six hours golden time period they, the boy will lose the arm so I think that is a very very heartwarming um, stories that happened in, uh, just lately so it's <coughs> April. Mm. Okay, timeline of the COVID-19. Now, I have done several videos myself on this timeline. Um, the first <coughs> video looked at only the December. And then in January, I cut it into two. Uh, first of January to 15 of January, and then 16 of January to 31st of January. So these are the information I collect back from my own video, which I did in approximately mid-February 2020. And unfortunately, I lost the original <laughs> file to 
watch my own video and then we write it back into English. The, of course, the, the video I prepare is in Cantonese. Mm. So I'm mm. translating all that back to here. I haven't do a 100% translation because each of the video itself is approximately uh, 30 to 40 minutes. So if I combine all them together, it will take me more than the time we have, we can afford to. So I have just summarized <laughs> all the key events. But again, I'm thinking showing you like this might not be the best way. So I will go through the time very quickly and then we'll use a YouTuber's timeline to as a summary. Oh. So we will start with December. Now remember it, uh, China is in the Northern hemisphere. So December is the high season for <coughs> And the COVID symptom is very similar to uh, flu symptoms. Okay, so that number one. And then uh, what? Wuhan is a city of 11 million people. So we will expect there's a large number of flu patients visiting doctors or hospital to treat their common flu. Okay, so how do you detect a, a epidemic? eventually becomes a pandemic out of a very large volume of flu situation out of that many, many, maybe we are talking about uh, maybe not hundred thousands, but obviously will be in thousands range. How can you pick up? There is a epidemic when you are seeing maybe a hundred patients per day because the, the Chinese daughter do turn around very quickly. And in a hospital, you may have 10 or 20 doctors in that department handling all the flu-like symptoms. So we are talking about thousands of cases and how can you pick up there's a virus spreading? That is a challenge, okay? So among that challenge, the <clears throat> and then the other thing about the timeline is that some of the timeline is bad data. The timeline I show you saying that the case start here is not the, the dates when that patients visit hospital. It is the dates that later on we adjust and say, okay, you should have infected at that time. So it's a bad tracking. Okay, the first, the first case so far or is either on the 1st of December on the, or the 8th of December. We are not <coughs> very is the date, but the one who is supposedly in fact on the 8th of December went to hospital on 12th of December. So when you have a flu, you don't, you don't rush to a hospital, you, just, you take some tablets, for example, okay? So, <clears throat> so and then at that time, nobody will know that there's a pandemic coming. On the 12th, a patient attended the hospitals. So that is the first patient. And he is not attending a very large hospital as well. He's one of the hospital, but not, it's not the largest hospital. And the hospital is very close to the seafood market. Next day, the daughter found that, well, we have a patient like that, better we take care. So the next day, the doctor seeing this patient uh, pass a look to his colleagues and ask them to say, okay, you better wear a mask because we suspect there is a virus coming. Maybe it's a common flu virus. We don't know, but we need <coughs> to get, get sick. 15th, another two patients show up. Later, later they were recognized. Uh, related to seafood, uh, because the initial batch of uh, patients all come from uh, that hospital close to the seafood market. So the Chinese started to pick up a signal, hey, the seafood market has something. But still, at the moment, up to now, we have three patients, okay, among thousands. Of course, later on, we can say that three people has infected COVID. 
But at that time, we have no COVID test. We don't know there's a virus called COVID in there. Another one show up again related to the seafood market. Five more show up. It's 20th December already. And then here we can trace back and say there is a human to human transmission. But at that time, nobody is sure there is a human to human tra transmission. Because up to now, how many? We have eight patients which is retrospectively identified as COVID. At that time, they were treating <clears throat> eight patients who has come on through. 21st, another four coming up, still eight, four, 12. Three more, 15, eight more, 15, uh, 23. 25, up to now on the 24th December, the officials is not aware of there's a deadly virus lurking in the city. No, the, the authority haven't, haven't been alerted yet because they just let it through, right? Until a daughter, Uh, three citizens in Wuhan developed full life symptoms. They were later discovered they had COVID. Okay. Uh, yes. On 25th, the health authorities started to get aware of hey, we have a different mm -hmm. kind of flu happening. They don't know what's that yet. Then on 26th, there's a daughter. Uh, by the way, this is a she daughter, okay, she's a, she is a, la a lady. Pick up a patient from the seafood market. And she asked them to have a chest CT scan and find the CT's image not typical to be found in a flu. So she started to be suspicious. And she asked this couple, do you have somebody living with you? They say, yes, I, we have a son. And then she asked his, their son to come in, have a CT. His son had no symptoms. Just asked the son to come in, have a CT and find the result similar to his parents. Um, this daughter is a department head of the uh, breathing clinics. <laughs> who, like, she reported it to his uh, her hospital. And in other labor in other hospitals, the laboratory also find some very interesting um, virus, which has 80% similarity with bats and 81% similarity with SARS. Uh, that is picked up from a laboratory. So I think routinely when you go to the doctor, they will ask you to collect some samples. And then out of the collection, one of the laboratory find a virus which is quite this and similar to what they have seen. At the same time, almost at the same time, mm -hmm. <coughs> Shanghai also collected a sample from Wuhan, which they bring back to Shanghai for analysis. Now we have several samples now. Now, these samples look different, but haven't uh, identified what they are yet. On the 27th, two more, and this daughter report her case to the hospital. So it's very quick. 26, she is suspect of something, and 27, she reported to her hospital. And the, what her hospital immediately advised the local disease control center, the local center of disease control. Okay? <coughs> Not even the Wuhan center, it's just the local center. And at this time, they are getting more patients with similar chest CT images. At that time, the Wuhan system recognized seven patients 
in that particular hospital, the 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 hospital in which this um this um doctor work, the same hospital, the uh Hope Hospital of Integrated Traditional Chinese and Western Medicine. So they integrate with so they. This hospital now has seven, seven patients. Seven patients with unknown cause. We <clears throat> don't know what kind of uh, virus or bacteria causing all this. So because that hospital is not infectious disease hospital. So they decided to notify the city and the province CDC and then transfer the patients over to a infectious disease hospital. The one very long there, okay, the coming on time. Oh, that's say seven uh, patients, six got transferred, but one refused to be transferred. So they, the, the one, one remain in the uh, traditional Chinese and Western medicine hospital. <coughs> And then similar cases were appearing in other hospitals in Wuhan. The personal protection for doctors had reason to include face masks, hats, and gloves. Okay, so initially just face masks, now gloves and hats. On the 30th, the national CDC was notified, and then specialists was organized to be sent to Wuhan to investigate. And then more of these fluid sample are being sent to the uh, Wuhan Virology Laboratory, which is the laboratory which is uh, accused of leaking out the virus okay, for DNA sequencing. Hopefully this sequencing can help with uh, developing testing kits. Wuhan CDC instruct all medical facilities in Wuhan to report similar cases from the last week and forbid these facilities to disclose the issue without authorization. Now that's very interesting. <clears throat> Why you forbid these facilities to disclose issue without authorization? Why? <laughs> control panic. <clears throat> panic control, right? If you spread that out and then you cause a panic con pa panic in an 11 million people city is big problem. So. I think the main reason why forbidding the transmission of this is uh, panic control. Want to control the citizens <clears> from. <throat> At the same time, these facilities organize training sessions to in, in reinforce procedure to prevent virus spreading. So on one hand, they get themselves prepared. At the other side, don't tell the public yet because we are afraid they will get panic. One of the daughter, which uh, have been reported very, very much in the Western media, uh, Lei Man Leung, Liu Wen Leung, uh, being part of the hospital, he picked up the information that there's a virus spreading and he sent that to his classmates in Wuhan Medical School, telling his friend to take personal precautions and not to further spread this information. But unfortunately, this not to further spread, spread. So <clears throat> if this government want to hold to information, it is impossible. The hospital told them you are not allowed to spread. Still, <laughs> you send it to other people and the other people send it to other people and including don't tell anybody else. I just tell you, and then you tell anybody, don't tell you. <laughs> so the information gets spread. And 31st December, 27 cases, and then seven of them are classified as serious. Uh, Hubei, the whole province, set up a specialist group to address this issue. Three more citizens develop flu like symptoms, and they are later discovered. Now, remember, there are lots of people having flu like symptoms at that time. So, we are, that is retrospectively find out that they were COVID patients. So because so many patients seem to come from the seafood market, they have a cleaning of the seafood market and the, the storeholders say, oh, I did it every day. 
And at that time, uh, the Chinese um, CDC started to collect samples from the seafood market. They, I think they collected about 67 samples or in the environment of the seafood market. All the patients are now concentrated into this uh, infectious disease hospital. A specialist from the national, the, from Beijing, also arrived for verification purposes. See, to, to check whether, yes, is there a virus spreading verification? And then the WHO health organization is also notified. The Daily Mail in uh, UK reported that 27 persons has pneumonia of unknown cause in Wuhan. So the news has already spread to uh, UK. Daily Mail from UK. Uh, the red dot there is Wuhan. Now, now we are very close to the spring human migration. The spring, uh, spring festival, the Chinese New Year spring, Chinese New Year is 24th January. And <coughs> week before that, so on about 10th or 9th or 10th of January, then it the Chinese transport system will go into high gear for this uh, spring festival, human migration. A lot of people from the coast, Shanghai down to Hong Kong from that coast will go back to the Eastern part, including those area in yellow. These are all still Chinese. So where, how do they, they do that? They usually will have the chain, um, train interchange at Wuhan. Wuhan is a hub, it's a in the, uh, train station hub. So they, they go there and then spread out. Now we are into 2020 now. Early stage, the number of cases doubled about seven and a half days. And in the mid January, it will be the Chinese New Year migration. So on the 1st of January, <laughs> that <coughs> picked up by the police. Hey, you are not supposed to spread, you are spreading. But eventually um, he had to sign a um, letter of non-disclosure on the 3rd of January, but no, not much punishment. Just go to the police and say, okay, I'm, I, I've done something wrong. I won't do it again, sign. And he, he, he can go. Okay. Seafood market was closed for cleaning. And more and more patients are coming to many hospitals in Wuhan. At that time, who reported 27 cases? And this is reported in one of the Chinese newspaper in Beijing, a Chinese newspaper oriented towards overseas and also reported by a newspaper in Singapore. So the news has already spread. On the 22nd, the Wuhan Institute established the DNA sequence. The Singapore Health Authority decided to keep a close watch for a travelers coming from Wuhan and they do um, yeah. checks for all passengers. That's 2nd of January. Okay, as I said, on the 3rd, then uh, this daughter went to the police station and signed a declaration not to spread rumor again. Basically, I meet, oh, okay, sorry, I, I make a mistake. I, don't do, I won't do it again. And then by then, Wuhan CDC has already published one public announcement. This is the second public notice we spotting 44 patients with 11 a serious case. Another institute also completed DIA sequence. Now we have two DIA sequence now. Okay. And many overseas newspapers pick up the news and start reporting. 
and the Hong Kong government activated the public health emergency response. On the 5th, now they are reporting, having a public notice on a um, daily basis. And the reporting is around midnight, usually uh, a quarter to midnight, sometimes a bit later after midnight. Maybe they have a lot of uh, verification to do before they report, and then they will report the number of cases, how many people are serious, how many deaths, and so forth. And the Shanghai research team have come back to Wuhan to collect more samples. And Shanghai and National CDC recommend precautions in public places. That means asking the Chinese people, start wearing your face mask. And the CCTV, the Central Chinese Television Network, also broadcast the, fir the third public notice. Albert, pardon me interrupting. Has anybody died yet? But no, not yet. Not yet, right. Not okay, yet. thank you, thank you. A center for Disease Control. Okay, the, the WHO released press conference updating the rest of the world. And the Guardian in UK reported there's 90, uh, 59 cases of pneumonia of unknown cause in Wuhan. Uh, so all these are still limited to Wuhan. The National CDC of China raised the national health emergency level to level two. I don't know how many levels they have. I think it's about five, but I'm not sure. The U US CDC and their public uh, health department offered to send a team of experts to China, which was declined. <laughs> Chinese declined the, the American um, intervention. The Singapore, uh, continue to report that there are some people coming from Wuhan to Hong Kong had suspected cases. Now, at that time, the virus still haven't had, got a name, okay? So it's still... Second expert, second expert team from CDC arrived in Wuhan, and the US CDC advises their hospital to take precautions for patients coming from Wuhan. So. The American can't say they don't know. Okay, the first death come in, okay? This is the, the 9th of January, the first death. But unfortunately, the family doesn't allow a biopsy. Is that biopsy or autopsy? Autopsy, okay, I've used the right word. And the case is also reported by um, the uh, Xinhua News Agency, as well as the CCTV. Okay, this is the official beginning of the spring migration. The virus sequence is also shared. So the Chinese have now, we have there three sequences. Uh, that three sequence is now shared to the world. And then all the medical supply company cancel Chinese New Year holidays rank up their production of the N95 mask, surgical mask, and other PPE. So the Chinese government understand there is a problem at hand because they record the sequence, once the sequence is, not, is known, they will be able to estimate how, how bad or how... CDC issues the fourth public notice. This public notice becomes regular one by one, but in my Chinese version, I do have the uh, every uh, public notice uh, check out. And then they received the first batch of test kits okay, on the 16th, very quick. Unfortunately, they are not reliable. <laughs> they are not as reliable, okay? But anyway, they get their first test kits and commence testing and then Four other cases outside of Ubay is found. And then another 17 cases within the whole Bay, Ubay uh, province. So now we have the concentration in Wuhan. Outside Wuhan is the province, which is Hubei. And then outside Hubei is China, okay? And then outside China, there is Hong Kong. Hong Kong has already got some, some suspected patients. Wuhan has the most concentration of patients. Outside Wuhan, we have 
uh, 17 in the Hubei province and four cases in the rest of China. So Chinese government need to start thinking how that how can you stop this virus from spreading? Second specialist group go back to Beijing and start um, their work and then conclude that the situation is serious. Now at that time, the sir is still un un uh, unaware, spelling mistake, unaware of potential human to human transmission. They still don't, doesn't know that yet. Now they narrow down the disease that is not bacteria, it is a virus by the infectious disease hospital. And they cancel the hospital's uh, spring festival celebration. Unfortunately, there's a large celebration in Wuhan, which was not canceled. But later on, and that they set up a standard procedure now. If the case is related to seafood market, you report all hospital. If you have a patient coming in with flu-like symptoms and related to the seafood market, you have to report the case. But later on, they found that this reporting standard is too strict because you have to have relation with seafood market. Therefore, later on, they relax that. Once at relax, another 30 cases was, were added in. And later on, they also added that they have to be tested positive with the test kits. Because of that, they also missed a number of cases and later on found that because of test kits, the first batch or first few batches of test kits is not that accurate. A magazine had done a good summary of what happened. And from that magazine summary, people started to indicate that there's a human to human transmission. So this is done outside of the experts. It is a, the editors of a magazine who first identify, hey, there may be a human to human transmission because there are cases unrelated to the seafood market. Again, earlier hours, the Wuhan CDC published its 10th report, no new death, uh, few, three recover, four new cases. So you look at the new cases coming, it's not a lot, only four, not a lot. Second expert team come in and that very large family gathering occurs, 40,000 people, okay? Not 40,000 people, it's 40,000 families. Oh, Man Ga Yin, 10,000 people's fam, 10,000 pe families dinner. So 40,000 families, I should have put in families there. 40,000 families gathered, gathering was allowed to continue which is a big mistake, but who knows? With hindsight, it is always 2020. Thailand and Japan also pick up cases. Associated Press from Singapore reported um, the Hong Kong government increased the monitoring effort. The Guardian report a third airport in the USA implemented body temperature measurements for visitors from Wuhan and the Chinese government confirmed the second death. So it's only a second death, okay, at the moment. And then 19th, and at that time he said, okay, it is not transmitting very, very good, limited human to human, cannot be excluded. You start to check, see the official wording change to say, okay, I think it is transmissible but not very, very much. And maybe human to human is possible. Put it that way. 30th, this really set the Chinese government off. 140 new cases in one day. Two in Beijing, one in Shenzhen. 
So again, uh, some of these cases were retrospective, and later on, a retrospective study found that at that time there were already six thousand people should have developed the case, but that was known much later after the um, other cases are settled in. Okay, twenty third, the Chinese government imposed a lockdown in Wuhan. So. Is the Chinese government overreacting? Or is the government haven't done something earlier? Uh, that is your judgment, okay? From the information I'm getting here is from a lot of Chinese newspaper sources. So I basically had got every uh, Wuhan CDC's notice. So I, I can verify that is the official information. So you gotta summarize that. I think I will show you this video. Um, this guy there is Nathan Rich. He is, he was living in China. I think at the moment he has a very serious uh, medical issues himself. So he's, uh, YouTube videos had now almost stopped. But at that time, he's quite active in terms of uh, commenting on things about China. And he did a very good job, look at the, his background, of analyzing what happened. So I will let him speak. I'm Nathan Rich, aka Hu Guo Da Wang. Today I want to go through a timeline of the coronavirus in China. So first a few things about this timeline. It's color coded so it's easier to look at. Blue items are general items. Green items are proactive things that are generally a positive influence on the situation. Beige things are new information. And purple are when the virus has reached other countries. This timeline only focuses on China. Otherwise, it would be way too big. Some items say the word later, which means that they happened at that time but they weren't known about or reported on until later. Also, a few of the items in here were reported to have happened on two different days, usually right next to each other. This is because you have reporting in the West and the East, which can be a one day time difference. And sometimes the people reporting will use their local time and sometimes they'll use the time in China, for example. So some few items have a little bit of confusion as to when exactly they happened. For those days, I either went with the day that was reported the most or I made a little span between the two days saying, we know what happened on one of these two days. In my comment section for my videos, I have seen some of the strangest conspiracy theories and wacky ideas about this event. And so I wanted to go through a timeline and clear up a lot of this confusion that's going on out there. I've heard that this is being handled much worse than SARS, much slower than SARS, the same as SARS better than SARS, all these different theories, it's overwhelming. One of the comments I got was that the investigation was extremely slow and that the beginning stages were very slow. And so we're gonna go through this together and take a look. Okay, so this is the timeline. Around November 6th or later is the first time that we know of that there was animal to human transmission. This is an assumption. And the reason that we know that is that the incubation period can be up to 24 days. We now know that there was a first case not related to the market on December 1st. That person must have got infected no earlier than 24 days before that. This is a little bit fuzzy. This is just sort of an assumption guesswork, but it does give you an idea of when this thing actually started as far as we know now, somewhere in November of 2019. Then obviously the spreading begins. For a while, we thought the first case was December 8th. Later, the market in Wuhan was declared to be infectious somewhere around the 10th. So that seems to line up with this. The Wuhan health authorities later refer to the 12th as the beginning of the outbreak. Nothing else develops that we know of. And then 
somewhere around the 21st of December, patients start coming into the hospital with pneumonia. And then here we see on the 26th, this is when Dr. Zhang first noticed that four of these cases seem to be pneumonia of an unknown cause. The way that they're diagnosed as being from an unknown source is that they don't make progress for three to five days. At least one was related to the market. There's multiple reports about the day that she informed the hospital, but it's either the 26th or the 20th. She told the hospital, which is what she's supposed to do. On the 27th, the hospital reported it to the district CDC. So that marks the beginning of when the district health authorities were aware. So December 27th, it has been reported to the authorities. Over the next few days, three more cases come. All of them are related to the market. 28th of December, the hospital also reports it to the Hubei Health Commission and the Wuhan Health Commission. Already on the 28th, we can say that the district knows, the city knows, and the province knows. On the 29th, an investigation begins. Wuhan CDC, the district CDC, and the hospital. Six of the seven patients were transferred to an infectious disease hospital. One of the patients refused. Provincial, municipal, and district disease control centers started getting reports about this also on the 29th. Also around the 29th is when they started quarantining people. Within 24 hours of the investigation, the Wuhan CDC reports the cluster of people to China CDC. So this is the day we can say for sure the national health authorities knew about the situation. That's the 30th of December. Wuhan also issued warnings to the hospitals. These were written warnings. These warnings that were issued to the hospitals began leaking on the internet immediately and Wuhan local media reported on those warnings. This is also the day that Dr. Lee warned his friends in a WeChat group who are also medical professionals, telling them to just tell their friends and family, but don't tell anybody else and don't let it get out of the group. Now, this is the earliest report of medical staff being infected, but this report comes from one place that doesn't have any sources listed. So I can't confirm if this is true. The next day, the 31st, this is the beginning of the government telling people what's going on. China CDC sends down more experts to help the Wuhan CDC. The Wuhan Health Commission also issued its first warning to the Chinese public. CCTV reported it at least twice that day. The hospitals in Wuhan had an emergency symposium on treatments of patients with pneumonia of an unknown cause. The warnings that had been leaking over the internet for the last couple of days were confirmed publicly to be true. The Wuhan Health Commission also publicly suggests wearing masks. This is also the day that the China CDC notifies the WHO. So that's about five or six days after the first suspected case, less than a week. So this is the first day that we can say the international health authorities are aware. To those of you who are saying this is pretty much the same as the SARS outbreak or slower, I want to share with you the difference. This is the first case, and this is when they notified the WHO. I want you to see if this were the first case of SARS, where on this timeline China notified the WHO. Ready? Here, three months after the first case, this is when they would have notified the WHO. January 1st, market closed, and they started searching for infected animals as well as disinfecting the area and that kind of stuff. Much of the public still didn't know what was going on, although there had been some announcements from the government the day before. So I want to just quickly go over this beginning part again, because this is very crucial. This is a major area that people seem to get totally wrong. The cases were reported to a hospital by Dr. Zhang. Within 24 hours, the district authorities knew. Within 48 hours of that, the province knew, the city knew, the district knew. Within three days, there was an investigation launched. Within 48 hours of that investigation starting, the World Health Organization was notified and the public started to be notified. By January 2nd, they had ruled out the flu, the avian flu, the denovirus, SARS, and MERS. The 3rd of January is when Dr. Lee signed his basically NDA, promising not to tell more people about what he thought was going on. Technical protocols were released for Wuhan. The NHC notified various counties and regions, so they're starting to tell the rest of China government what's happening. And also the virus was identified. A SARS expert in Hong Kong said that there was no proof of human-to-human -human transmission. This entire wide blue area here 
there's no new cases. On the 5th, Wuhan Health Commission advises citizens to wear masks again, and the China CDC activated level two emergency response. On the 7th, they confirmed that that virus that they had discovered was in fact responsible for the disease and that disease became known as NCIP. Here's various reports that came out around that time. No evidence of human to human transmission, no medical staff infected, not as deadly as SARS. New York Times again, no evidence of human to human transmission. Xinhua, no medical staff infected, no clear human to human evidence. If we assume that the one single report before this that comes from this website that doesn't share its sources, if we assume that that's not true, then these reports are correct. There's no scientific evidence of these things yet. During this period of time that there are no new cases, this is when things seem to slow down. It's mostly lab work. January 10th, we had our first death and Dr. Lee started showing symptoms, but he didn't go to the hospital. They get the genome sequence to the WHO, PCR regions arrive in Wuhan, so rolling out better testing, and a study comes out, symptom-free transmission might be possible. But now that study's been challenged, so now we're not really sure if it's true or not. On the 12th, Dr. Lee checked into the hospital, but he tested negative for the virus. The Wuhan Health Commission says, human-to-human -human transmission is possible. This is on the 15th of January. And look at what happens next. This is the beginning of a huge, huge response. Wuhan starts rolling out infrared thermometers to airports, railway stations, bus stations, and passenger terminals. The cases started going up. And all this huge response that we see here is all going to start now. These two, nurse being infected, medical staff being infected, these are from the same one source that doesn't list their sources that says that this happened. So I can't confirm it. If these were true, then this could be considered much stronger evidence or even proof of human to human transmission. However, I can't confirm those. And these happen after the Wuhan Health Commission already says that it's possible. Here we have the infamous banquet in Wuhan in which thousands of people were invited to eat together. Human to human transmission was already declared possible just a few days before that. As these infrared thermometers are rolling out across Wuhan, everything starts getting put into motion by the government. And you can't see some of the items here because most of these are just telling you when something began. You don't see all the planning and the implementation and the meetings and the logistics and all that stuff. That's all happening right here. That's happening. As soon as they saw that it is human-human transmissible, that's when everything starts to really kick into gear. Flu treatment at all hospitals for all flu symptoms in Wuhan is made free. That's to encourage people to go in. They open a specialized command center for epidemic control. A famous expert named Dr. Zhong is sent to Wuhan. This is like a publicity thing, but he actually is an expert. And they determine that there are three strains total, possibly earlier than this point, but definitely by this point they had known that the virus actually has three strains, not just one. At the 22nd of January, Wuhan requires masks in public, and then the next day, Wuhan is quarantined. Provinces start declaring level one emergency. Most of Hubei is quarantined. Domestic film releases are canceled. Wuhan transportation shuts down. Also, they started constructing this massive hospital in Wuhan. The next day, even more provinces declare level one emergency. Tourist sites begin shutting down. Cinemas shut down. Beijing, Shanghai residents are urged not to return home from holidays until 14 days. The next day, January 25th, Hong Kong declares an emergency. 1,700 medical staff are sent to Wuhan, and the Politburo meets. The Politburo is the top level of all the government here in China. And they say party committees and governments at all levels should take the novel coronavirus outbreak prevention and control as the top priority of their work. This is the entire government mobilizing towards something. The second hospital starts getting built. The next day, schools in Beijing are ordered to stay closed. I'm just using Beijing. This was actually happening all across the country. Vaccine development begins in China. The spring festival gets extended, so less people come home. Interprovincial buses and trains start to shut down. Wildlife trade is banned. Nationwide 
use of monitoring stations is now required. In one day, all this stuff in one day. The next day, Nature magazine describes China's response as swift and decisive. AB Medical Center opens the 28th on the 29th. This is also the day that the eight doctors were essentially acquitted, and the government released a statement that essentially said it was trying to learn from the mistakes of the case of Dr. Lee and these other doctors. The 30th is when Dr. Lee actually tests positive for the virus. He's been in the hospital this whole time. So that and other evidence told us that tests can fail several times. In fact, five times you can fail the test, don't have the virus, then the sixth time they find actually you do have the virus, which is really scary. This is also the same day that the WHO declares a public health emergency of international concern. The China-Japan Friendship Hospital on this day said that reinfection might be possible. Very scary as well. Most interprovincial travel is banned. Even hiring a car in between provinces is banned. And down here, we can see that this whole time, nations Nationwide restrictions on groups and communities are rolling out. Everyone in mainland China is affected by this. Every community has some restrictions, every store, public area, everything. It's affecting literally everything in China. And that all started around here. The 1st of February is when the virus was found in feces. The 2nd of February, all movie and TV production is completely shut down. The 3rd of February, the first hospital that they're building opens. The 6th of February, the next hospital opens in Wuhan. And it's determined that the incubation period may have a max of 24 days. And the rest of this timeline is not complete. This is just a few events that are happening now. Earlier, I showed you when SARS was reported relative to when this was reported. Now I'm going to show okay. you the end. Stop here. Okay. So if you want, I have the URL there. You can uh, go there, watch the rest. Uh, it's about 25 minutes long. So he did a lot of research. And I also did my own research. So the two research seems to be aligned quite well from my research and from his. Now, my research is done independent of his research. I'm, I'm not basing on his research. You can search my um, Chinese channel and then you can find my uh, timelines uh, talk in Cantonese. So you would like, you can check that out. But anyway, the timeline here to me looks very different from the timeline as reported in the news. You got the idea? Because to me, the Chinese government has been very quick and decisive. When Wuhan closed down, it is reported to 27 cases. 27 cases closed down a 11 million uh, city. Now, at that time, on my comment on my own YouTube channel, I was questioning whether the Chinese government had been too harsh on this. Obviously, I was wrong. At, the, at looking back, the Chinese government had done the right thing. But at that time, only 27 cases in Wuhan, they closed down 11 million hospital, uh, 11 million cities. And at the same time, built two very large scale infectious disease hospital. The first one is about 1,000 beds. The second one is 1,600 beds, 1,600. Within a matter of 10 days, they delivered the first hospital. And another few days later, delivered the second hospital. Now, at the same time, there was another um, rehab, it's called rehabilitation hospital. That means you have a, a lot, a, a serious disease. Now you are going to rehab and then later you go back, go back to family. Now, there was a hospital that had already competed, but haven't installed anything. The building is competed. They installed that rehabilitation hospital within 24 hours as an infectious disease hospital. And then the specialist from China, no, not, not hey, put, put that away. Then the Chinese government started to organize medical uh, support to Wuhan. So medical personnel are, fighting, are coming into Wuhan. Now, you have 2,000 
patient's hospital. So the normal patient's nurse to patient ratio is three to one, I think, because the nurse has to work 24 hours. So on a shift. So I think it's about 20, 20, uh, three to one. So that means you have a 1,000 pa patients hospital. You would need about 3,000 support, both in terms of doctors, nurses, lab personnel, et cetera. So just that two hospitals, you are looking at over 10,000 people already. And then all the other hospitals in Wuhan is now in full, full capacity, running at over capacity. So they also have to go in and change the normal hospital from a general hospital into an infectious disease hospital, almost overnight. Some hospitals, uh, the first thing they have to implement is that the traffic becomes a one directional traffic. The nurses come into an infection area and then they will come out from another area that's get these in disinfected before you can leave. So if you from there go back to your infectious, uh, go back to your clean area, you can contaminate the clean area. So they have to change the whole hospital so that it becomes a one-way traffic for the whole hospital. So that's a huge amount of work. And they, I think they change most of the hospital in Wuhan to the infectious hospital, at least temporary for that period. At the same time, another big issue is how do you quarantine people? Here, we are asked to stay at home, right? We sell quarantine for tourists coming back. We quarantine them in hotels. In Wuhan, what they do? How do you quarantine 11 million cities? So we are talking about 80,000, uh, 60,000 people. 60,000 uh, people, how do you quarantine them? They started building what they call the square cabin hospitals. Now these square cabin hospitals are using existing large venues, for example, stadium, exhibition center, this large, and then um, just use simple partition. Uh, the partition is only about about this level, okay? Not very high. You stand up, you can look through, but you lie down, people can't see you, okay? So partitions and then put beds. And this cut, uh, square cabin hospitals, they implemented about 23 of them, ranging from a few hundred people to about 2000 people each. And these people come in has to have two conditions satisfied. The first condition that they, they are symptom free. They have no symptoms. Secondly, they are test positive for the COVID. So you have test positive and you have no symptom. That means you can handle yourself. Then you are quarantined in this square hospital, square uh, cabin hospitals. The released conditions is that you have to test positive, uh, sorry, test negative twice within 48 hours. So today you test negative, don't release yet. Tomorrow you test negative, not yet. And not test says you can go. So in case any patient's situation deteriorate, then the patient will be transferred to a proper hospital for care. But in this, in this square cabin hospital, people can take care of themselves. People are basically healthy, looks healthy, but they, are, they know they are under medical care. So how do you give them the feeling of under medical care? <laughs> so, they give them Chinese traditional medicines. In, during the SARS period, Chinese had developed some Chinese traditional medicine for the SARS patients. They are having this large 
boiler, what, what hot water, and then dump the Chinese medicine there, and then everybody will have a bowl of that medicine every day, twice, morning, evening. I think some three times. From that, it comes out a very interesting research. Those square cabin hospital, which offer this Chinese uh, uh, medicine, the rate of deterioration is half of those which doesn't op offer this traditional Chinese medicine. So at least we know the seed, the Chinese medicine, a, a number of them actually we reduce the, the case to turn into serious case. Because these are patients already is uh, confirmed COVID. So that's how the Chinese handle that. I think that removes some of the discussions. Because as I said, I, I won't be attacking the, the video provided by BBC point by point. There's no point doing that. Mm -hmm. So I, I better uh, show you both two different, yes. Albert, do you think that the front chance that uh, COVID-19 may have come from another country or may have escaped from uh, the star laboratory in Wuhan accidentally? Uh, that's where the, the two pages of paper I gave out will address. So please read them in your time. Uh, again, I have quoted the source where, where they come from, from at the very beginning. Yes. Is, are those Chinese medicines that are throughout China still operating? Ah, uh, good question. I don't know. <laughs> because yeah. for the last 20 years, mm. there's been one thing after another, supposedly uh, coming out of those markets. Yeah, okay. And then spreading worldwide. Okay, now, I've, I thought you were referring to that time. Now, at the moment, today, the Chinese wet market still operates. Okay, today, still yeah. operates, okay. But at that time, I don't know whether all the Chinese wet market has closed because it is so close to the Chinese New Year. Yeah, but so, it's still operating today. Yes, it is you operating know, today. Um, yeah. Um, another interesting thing coming out from the research is that the, remember the, the seafood market in uh, Wuhan? The scientists did a floral test, environment test, the animal test, and they found they doesn't find the virus. That is the problem at the moment. They can't find the virus in that particular uh, seafood market. So where they come from, we don't know yet. So and that that is the the second WHO mission uh, just earlier this year. They they went to China and and they come back say we don't know because from the samples collected from that seafood market, we can't find it. But the Chinese has found viruses coming from cold food, the frozen, frozen meat from other countries, typically initially coming from America because America is a lot of virus. And the, the, quest, the problem is that these viruses survived in cold storage. Can they survive in hot environment? We thought that they can't, but given what happened to India at the moment, mm -hmm. they can. Yeah. Maybe they have mutated, I don't know. But looking at in the world, the virus start, boom, never, actually we never get rid of it, except China. Mm -hmm. So that is another big problem facing us. Will COVID with us forever? Mm -hmm. I hope not. But looking at the situation, I think it will. But India was a disaster waiting to happen. So yeah. It's it really, uh, yeah, it's really bad. Really bad. So. Um, can I just say that I noticed that um, they, they started the, the virus on spread very quickly. Now, there's still been arguments going on here recently about whether a camera can be the virus on spread. All yeah. this time later. I mean. Yeah. The, the Chinese is. Pretty strict on that one. I, they, I think they, they err on the more caution than the next caution. 
So again, now, I think Rick, um, Nathan Rich did his own research and I did my own research. So I don't know whether he is reading uh, the Chinese uh, newspaper as well, because I know he can speak Chinese, but I, I don't know whether he can read Chinese. Although his um, videos always are Chinese and English uh, subtitles, probably there's a team of people working for him to put in the subtitles. So I am not, I don't know whether Nathan Bridge will be able to read Chinese or not, but I'm sure he can speak Chinese because he, he yes, has been staying in Chinese for quite some time. And so I don't know whether he's collecting all this information purely from an English source or from a, from a Chinese source, but I can confirm to you my source is from, from Chinese. I didn't collect any information from the English. And one of the American speakers in Indonesia, and they did say in their very, very early on. Yeah, we don't know. Because we, we, we don't, that especially when we going back at that stage, unless there are patients with specimen left behind, otherwise you can't test, we don't know. Mm -hmm. So that is a big issue. And remember that is at the peak of the flu season, they are handling thousands of patients every day. Well, Wuhan, it is 11 million people city. So there is a lot of patients. How can you pick up these few cases out of the thousands? Is is mind boggling? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So. The other part of China do send in uh, medical personnel. So at the whole China is working at full capacity, put it that way. Because the, from the other provinces, they squeeze some of the medical personnel out to go to Wuhan. And that means the people left behind have more heavy workload. So it is estimated that there's about 30,000 uh, medical professionals went into Wuhan during that period. 30,000 is not a, a small number. Uh, among them, about 4,000 come from the Chinese uh, PLA, the People's Liberation Army. So their, their expert teams had sent about 4,000 into the Wuhan. The first infectious disease hospital built is manned by PLA. The PLA man, man the first hospital. Okay, anyway, I think, yes. Why do you think the Chinese government is so angry towards Australia and the West for wanting to make this so further investigate about Wuhan? Uh, the Chinese government is angry when you put politics before science. If you point the finger at China, he is not happy. You want to investigate scientifically. Sure. And China is the only country in the world that has received two times WHO experts. No other country has ever received one WHO, WHO investigators yet. We hope other countries can follow suit in order to find the origin of the virus. Chinese, China is the only country which allowed the WHO to come in twice. Once in February, uh, 2020, the other one not too long ago, 2021, but no other countries has ever allowed WHO expert to go in. So that is a problem. And China doesn't like you pointing finger at the virus must come from China. That's that's not, not okay. That's not okay to call this virus a Chinese virus or Wuhan virus, right? So that's not okay to point fingers say this virus come from China. Investigation, fine, good, should, should, right? And China allowed the WHO to go in. Yeah, but WHO been in twice and they haven't been able to in. Yep, so far haven't found anything but they rule out a lot of other possibilities. Like 
leaking from the Wuhan virology laboratory. They ruled that out. They also ruled out a direct back to human transfer. There must be another animal in between. What is the animal? We don't know yet. So yes, they have, have a nail down, but they rule out a lot of possibilities. So, so, so the experts are experts. They, they did something and then scientific investigation is not political finger pointing. What is going on in China now? What's happening in various parts of China with regards to the virus and inoculation? Yes, uh, I, the thing I prepared for next week is a series of um, pictures uh, drawn in 1800s. So I think I prepared that. So I would take on your advice. If I can prepare the new one, I can always postpone that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, but I just tell you, I prepared that one for next week. So it depends on whether I can. So, Yep, I will try to collect collect the information and then present to you what's happening in, especially in terms of uh, vaccinations. Vaccination is hopefully what can get us out of here. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.